Good evening. I wrap Stephen of Linden Associates with your Metal Market Wrap Up, and this is for Tuesday, the 2nd of March, 2021, 540 p.m. Central Time. So we look at the market and you've come back up in the stock market. It had a late in the day sell-off, bouncing back, but I tell you, I haven't changed my opinion that the market's looking a bit heavy right here. You're gonna have to get up for those highs again to convince me it's not. We're getting a little bit of a follow-through sell-off in the energy markets, and that's because if you saw the API number, while there was beautiful draws in the gasoline and the distillates, 7 million barrel build in crude is not what the market wanted to see. But when we come over to our metals here, copper got a good bounce today, giving up a little bit of that now. And as you can see, most of the market's still waffling around. So let's go to the chart and get a feel for what we've got. When we come to the weekly chart, you can see how the market is just staying on a closing basis underneath the 18-week average, which puts the bias and keeps the bias down. We're up halfway through the week now, about a half a percentage point, a quarter of a point. You know, you're just bouncing around right there. When you take a look at the daily bar chart, you get to see here on the bigger picture, and that's why I made it this large, how the market's just been in a stepping ladder to the downside. And now we've come down into that 1700 level where the market again, and it's done this in the past, tries to get its footing and we'll see if that holds or not. When I shrink the chart and now you get the picture as to, I like it a little more consolidated here, what's clear is we've got a pattern of lower highs and certainly lower lows. That is the making of a bear trend. That's the exact definition of it. The whole key, if one was short here, is to not get back over 1750-740, which is about, oh, what, $22 higher, a little more than that. Where's the resistance? Well, it's way up and above that number, which means to get back to the 18-day moving average of closes, a number I call the line in the sand, you'd have to clear that number, which would then take the market for the first time since back here, before just before February, where the market has broken the pattern of lower highs, lower and lows. Could that be important? It could be. We have to wait and see what that would mean. What's the market been holding each time it breaks? A Bollinger Band. These are these black lines that you see here. First thing, they do not run parallel to the 18-day average. What runs parallel to that is there's another tool called a window envelope. And you might want to familiarize yourself with that kind of tool as well. Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within the bands 95% of the time. Now, if you wanted to be a wise guy, you'd say, hey, I would just change the reading, make it 100% of the time. Fine. What would that accomplish on the chart? You want the market to be able to hit the band so you get a point point of exit. So if one is short, coming out. If one were long, coming out of the market. There are ways you play with that, and that's my enhanced Bollinger Band course, which I was probably four hours recording today alone. I'll be doing it each day until I get it finished, and I have been working through the weekend on this and now. I threw away many of the chapters I did and redid them for a reason. I'm making the course even better, and I think you'll love it. I think at the end of the day, I'll give you the tricks of uh, what I have discovered over many, many years in working with this. But the key is to take the charting course first because I'm not going to reteach what a Bollinger Band is, what a slow stochastic is. You're not going to get me to do that. I'm going to take what I taught in the course and where that ends, pick this up. So where we're at right now is the pattern there that is oversold in the slow stochastic. Both numbers are under 20 at this point, but you can't count Wednesday. So we go to Thursday, Tuesday, rather, and both numbers were not under 20. And if I go to the day before, they weren't. So you just have an oversold market that keeps respecting the lower Bollinger Band bounces, but you don't end up going up and making new highs on the move. It keeps the bearish flavor in the market. The gold-silver ratio continues to stay under that 18, what? 18-day moving average of closes, what I call that line in the sand, still looking bearish to me. 
When I step over now, and that means silver stronger than the gold. When I look at silver, the trend has been to the downside, not like golds, I think you'd agree. Gold's been down since February, making those lower highs, lower lows. Not the case here, and I don't think it would be the case. I think silver's got a different story. I think it has the post-pandemic story, the need for durable goods, the need for everything that uh, is an electrical that silver gets involved in. There's many, many more stories, but, it still hasn't come alive. It's churned basically sideways. And I hate to say this, uh, basically since the beginning of February, you had this one spike up on Reddit. Remember, they were gonna squeeze the silver market and they drove the market to $30, took it right back down to the uh, near $26. And from then, it's just been hanging on. To get again to the 18 day average of closes, which is often a neutral point on a chart, you'd have to break the downtrend. Again, this market doesn't act like it has an appetite to stay under that lower Bollinger Band. If it dropped, I'd look for the 25.55 level. But if you get over 27, 17 and a half, I think you go neutral and you break that bearish pattern. The copper market has lost its embedded reading. It's an overbought market, not even trying to re-embed. Often the pros will sell this type of bounce because this often, I use the word often, not always, often leads to price in the 18 day average making a run. I've been prepping my clients and telling them that each day that's going by, you're adding about 300 points. And this is what I've been doing in my morning subscriber video, so I'll let you see that too. Two, the 18 day average. If that's the goal, it's gonna be over $4 tomorrow, and by the end of the week, it should be up near 407, 408. Probably over this number, uh, I'm gonna say by Friday, the 404 level, we'll see what that's gonna do. But that tells me that this break is not gonna be severe. What's really happening is the 18 day average is rushing up to meet the current price, not price falling to the 18 day average of closes. If you go to the bonds and notes when I do my financials, you'll see a little bit different story there. In the platinum market, you're now oversold. So could it drop down to the Bollinger Band? It sure could. Will it? That's a whole different question. You've just come from 1350 roughly back to 1174. That's a heck of a break. Does the market need to consolidate that? I would think so. Is there a reason to be bearish when you're this oversold? Well, I'm not. You're not even close to embedding. So I think that the bears, if they're looking at something, my guess is, my guess, it's the window envelope that's down here and they're saying maybe they take some money off the table. Resistance back up here at 1231.70. Now the last break low here, this day, was 1170.40. In order for the market to now flash a signal that maybe it's had enough, you have to get over 1232 and not take this, yes, which is Tuesday's low out of 1174, that would flash that kind of signal. Who's in control of the market right now? the bears are at this point in time. Where's the resistance? Back at the 18 day average. But again, I've got my doubt that they have an appetite to defend that very much when you're this oversold. In the palladium market, you have a pattern of a higher high, higher low. The market's caught since it's created that with that one swoop up and as you've come back, you're running into the combination of the 18 and the 100 day average. But there's something sneaky going on here. What do I mean by that? I want you to look at the 18 day average and the 100. This market had the 100 over the 18. You're starting to get very quietly here, a scenario where the 18 is getting over the 100. If you clear 2380, that might be a signal that the market wants to make a run to wherever that upper Bollinger Band is. Not saying it'll do it, I'm saying that's what's there. I clearly don't have any sell signals. The market's refusing to issue a full-fledged buy by staying over that number, although it did it, in all fairness, did it on the close today. So until it takes out right here again, what do I think you have? I think the bull's trying, I wanna use that word, trying to grab control. It didn't help tonight to be down $10. In the dollar index, I wanna repeat what I teach. When you hit, the first time you hit a Bollinger Band, I don't care where it comes in, 
That's where I think professionals take money off the table. Now there's ways to trade this with an embedded reading and a non-embedded reading. I'm teaching that in my enhanced version course right now. That's what I'm putting together for you. It's exactly what I'm putting together. But on this version, you hit the Bollinger Band, you're not embedded. I think traders back away from the market, and that's just what I think has gone on here. Is it a change of trend? Well, there is no trend, tra uh, trend to change. You've had a lower low, higher high now for the recent part here. You went up to the 100-day average, couldn't gather the strength to do anything with it. And if, if you, even if you just ran tomorrow to the upside, you don't change this pattern of a lower, low, higher high. You know, I give you a lot of terms here, slow stochastics, key moving averages, window envelopes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, our good friends at Futures um, Magazine, put this together. The guide to technical patterns, one and two. It could be trend lines. It can be the oscillators I'm talking about. I have people asking what kind of moving averages. Well, the reason they're asking, am I using smooth, weighted, which ones? Do you use GAN, Elliott, other methods that work here, the Arun indicator, price-time relationships, all this through there. It's explained, each brochure is about 23 pages long, I'm giving you an approximate there. You print them out on your computer. We don't send anything by mail anymore, so we converted it, so you can easily print it out in full color with all the examples. All you need to do is uh, go to our website, sign up for it under free offers, or give my staff a call. They'll take care of you that way. I'm I. Rapstein. Talk to you tomorrow.